Of course, it's big news. There's a map with it. Welcome to the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. This is the Armageddon e edition, apparently. So this is more like the monsoonal. Todd and Aaron Daily Monsoonal. Oh, instead of stream, nicely done. Tidal monsoonal. wave. Yeah. How does a Pacific storm make its way to Utah? Well, it's happening. And hovering. That's the interesting part. Usually I could see it skiff by, but no, this is a big one. It's the tropical something or another Rosa. It's Rosa is her name, and she's going to be dumping water on us. Would you please read the official bulletin? You're beside yourself. Okay, well, yes. No, no, wait, wait. I have to do the thing everybody hears on TV and radio. Okay. Go. They issued the flash flood watch for all of southern Utah yesterday on Monday, and then starting at 6 a.m. this morning, it kicked into effect for here in northern Utah. So they are expecting flash floods, um, and this runs through Wednesday. So mm -hmm. this is like another 48-hour storm. The sad thing that's kind of sad about this, though, is, is that they were actually recommending the people underneath the burn scar areas, like down in Utah County, buy flood insurance because when it goes, there's not going to be anything to stop it, and their houses are underneath it and it's also tell, really telling people to go out and clean out the storm drains when's the last time it's somebody told you to clean out your storm drain and by the way on the insurance thing i thought this is interesting i heard that i was listening to a lady uh insurance person and she said um if the area you're under like it was a forest or up by the capital or wherever if utah it, county i think that was declared a national emergency right if it is registered as a federal event kind of thing okay there is no waiting list for there's no trial period what do they call so it? the insurance companies can't go ah, ah, ah you're gonna have to wait they, right. they have to sign you right away so instead of 30 days it's like you sign the paper boom you're done and then if mud comes down the hill you're covered which, which is, is a cool. nice Covered in mud, but also covered by insurance. Exactly. So both those things. One sucks, but the other at least digs you back out of it. Wow, that's intense. I'm going to go clean out our sperm drains right now. <laughs> sit down. Sit, just sit. Really wanted no, to. No, I think even Jackie, Mayor Jackie Biskepsi was saying. She was saying, out there in person. They showed people actually filling sandbags. 6,000 today was their really? goal. I mean, they, people are saying, watch your neighbor's house. Watch their... Their uh, window wells, watch, you know, and that's here in Salt Lake City. We're on City. a fairly steep hill. How does that impact us? Uh, it's okay, except for the people at the bottom. Okay. They can do my favorite thing. Our neighbors is, do have window wells. We'll watch. We will watch them as okay. they fill up and become aquariums. So anyway, if, if you're getting some of these pictures and you're seeing craziness, we would love to see them. If you'd share them on our oh, Facebook yeah. pages with us, we would love to see what's going on in your neck of the woods. and. I'm sorry, and we'll come help dig you out afterwards. All right, people, but I would love to see what's going on. People have been messaging me on Facebook saying, Todd, what's wrong with your wife? I said, you want a list? Uh, and uh, basically this whole Halloween thing, as you see behind us, looms. Mm. This is our new Halloween tree. Very small portion of it. How does this come into being? Watch. Ladies and gentlemen, I present my wife, Erin, and our dog, Gil. Erin will now tell you why it is so important to have a Halloween tree this October. Have you decided whether we're gonna do the multicolored ones? There's a new style at this year. It's like purple and green and orange, like like I, like Frankenstein maybe, or there's the clear orange. Have we decided which ones we're using, honey? I really haven't put a lot of thought to it. You know, this is a crucial thing. Look, you have to remember, Halloween is our thing here at the Collards. I mean, Christmas is nice and everybody decorates for Christmas, but the Halloween tree is a sacred thing. It's an important symbol of fall. And if I can't make my children eat their breakfast, huddled underneath the branches of the Halloween tree, dripping with Spanish moss and skulls, I am no kind of mother. I can see the dogs all real excited about this. <laughs> it's hard to get Gail real stirred up or right. anything but dog treats. So is what's it time for now? Um, well, I think you have to start with cementing the branches. See, the deal is you can't just go out and get like one of those. Well, you can go get a fake black tree. That's okay. But we like to go and get like the skelly, skeleton sort of splintery branches that'll be like ripped off of a big old tree. Yeah, whatever, branches. whatever. You want me to get to work, don't We're you? We're going to cement those suckers. Let's do okay. this. Okay. It is now time for concrete, or is it concrete? It's actually called Quickcrete. It sets faster. Plus, I'm going to show you what you can do with it. Now, you're probably saying, Todd, why don't you bring the whole 50-pound bag in? That's because it's a 50-pound bag. <laughs> I'm not going to use 50 pounds. Aaron is now holding the tree. The more sticks you put in, the less concrete quick mix you need. All right, so uh, basically, I just cut some things in. I'm just going to start putting it in. 
concrete on my own. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm dumping the quick creek in. What? <laughs> I would be intimidated doing concrete on my own, I think. The dust is uh, a bit corrosive, so you might want to watch yourself. That's true, you're sure. Thank you, bud. You just stay right there, honey. You're good. Um, <laughs> but you're saying, Tom, why are you putting it in dry? Because I can. And so basically, it's like a fence post. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up. I'm not going to fill it up. Let me correct that. How are you ever going to get this out of your house? You need a pair of pruning shears and start cutting up because this will be rather heavy. I also, uh, forget that, there is a cover underneath, you can see right here, um, and that is because this, when you add water to it, is like a lot of stuff, is like a chemical reaction and it heats up. So better to protect, especially if you have a wooden floor. So. We're gonna do this and do this and put that in there. Uh, Aaron will keep holding it and That's then right. we'll do the magic thing. What's that? It's a mystery magic thing. Oh, okay, oh, we're drying the suspense now. All yeah, right. Yeah, that, that'll uh, be coming up next. Well, that wasn't hard. That's because you're holding a stick. <laughs> You're holding a stick. Oh, 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 yeah. I was doing the concrete part. I'm, my name is Todd. Yeah, fine. Okay, so we're about here's the Here's the magic part. Okay, so uh, uh, the magic part about quickcrete is the mm -hmm. fact that I can just take water now and I don't have to mix it. Why is that, by the way? You can do this with fence posts, too. Really? Yeah. That's a lot better than having to mix it and then drag it around. Oh, exactly. Now, I'll put a, probably another gallon in there. But as you can see, it's bubbling. Bubbling. Is this the chemical reaction? No, this is it. the water just going through the wet mix, okay. the dry mix, and, and the water seeping in. Nice. I'll probably put at least another gallon in there. Uh, and and the, the tub will heat up a little bit, so you might want to keep an eye on that. And then. Uh, Does it burst into flame? <laughs> no, it won't burst into flame. Well, you make it sound all scary. Well, it's Halloween, right? Oh, okay. That's, that's why true. you're holding this stick. <clears throat> So how long does it take for it to harden so I can let go of the stick? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, depending on how it's balanced and such, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go have a sandwich and I'll see you later. Okay, just, but still, this is your part, okay? This is your part of the project. Who wanted the Halloween tree? Raise your hand. Ta-da! All right, I'll see you. Okay. Can you turn the TV on for me? No. I need you to focus. All right, so you have me in a darkened room. Oh, you saucy. Mix. You wish. There's design issues at foot here, honey. Right. That's much more important. Why are we here? Okay, there's a light dilemma, so you have to help me decide. All right, go ahead. All right, first of all, the tried and true, the orange. All right, the orange ones. Okay, orange is, is, is standard, it's old school. Halloween is orange and black, and for right. many years, we de this is how we decorate orange and black. This is right. hardcore, it's old school, this is, this is the look. This is the look I remember, mm -hmm. and that we've used in the past. Orange I mean, and black forever, that's the look. Orange and black, orange and black. Yeah, orange yeah. lights are just, you know, they scream Halloween. There's no other time of the year you're like, I need to use orange lights, this Sweet. is a Halloween look. This is going on a Halloween tree. Yes, exactly. Classic. Yeah, there's tradition involved. People are going to see this from the outside, just like a Christmas tree. I am torn because, I know, and people have always stood outside the window, like, with their head cocked, like, what is that? And then they'll take a picture on their cell phone and, like, send it to a friend, like, have you seen this before? And we'll see a flash of light in the inside of it. What is that? It's like the Halloween All tree right, is so sacred. what you're telling me is there is something new out there. Well, see, this is where I'm torn, because in right. today's commerce-driven world, nothing can be left to the old, to the traditionary. Right. But I am now a little bit torn because it's kind of a cool concept. It's like any other decor item. Right, they, have to, they have to mix it up. So you will see. Are you kidding me? Look, it's orange and green and purple. It always, for some reason, reminds me a lot of like Frankenstein. So I'm going to call them the Frankenstein lights. I like the purple ones. Right? Yeah. And then the green and the orange. So it's more like a, a melange of like Halloween imagery. A what? A melange, a pleasing display. Oh. Okay. A tableau. So I'm doing this effect right now, so mm -hmm. I can see the different colors and oh, how nice. they look when you when you're drunk. Um, oh well, that's good too, I guess. Okay, so the people walking by the house are inebriated, then they'll really right, appreciate so that. 
Okay, so the question is, do we go with this on the tree? I, you know, I'm torn though because they're kind of cool, right? I mean, they are the purple. And are so nice. it, it might play up a little bit more of the col colorful element of the tree because we do do a lot of stuff. We might be going in way too deep on this. I'm not sure. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, put them side by side. Okay. But then I feel like I'm violating the trust of the traditional orange if I don't go with them. But okay. the Frankenstein mix is kind of cool. All right. Well, we're going to have to figure this out at some point. So what do you think? You really do have the artist eye in the family. Which do you think would look cooler on the tree? I like traditional, but the kids would like... It's like the Christmas tree, isn't it? Where we want like the tasteful white, you know, the, right. and the kids are like, make it look like a carnival. The only thing we'd never break, you know, never give up on is no freaking blinking. Yeah, I'll take color as long no, as you don't make it blink. No blinking lights. Yeah, I don't need a Christmas seizure. So All it's right. now we're tempted with Halloween. What is the well, point? What do we do this here? This is what I think. I yes. think let's go with... Look at you stepping out of the tradition. And you have, an, you have enough of those, right? Yeah, sure. Plenty. All right, so let's go. They are kind of cool. All right, let's go with those. You want to? Because they're going to be spread out a lot, right? And then I'll just use I'll just use the traditional orange outside, like on the porch. All right. So th they still have their place. They're still out there. But yeah, let's try the fancy, like, Frankenstein-y ones on okay. the tree. Right. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, we've got a choice. Let's go yeah, do this. The kids are watching TV and stuff. And... Honey, I have decorating to do. I think we might have overdone it. No, time. it's perfect. It's perfection, and I can hardly wait for you to show off the cool new cornflower decorations. I think those are amazing. Now, we've run into this in the past. Maybe you know, not cornflower. Eerie corn blossom, is that right? Husky, scary horror flowers. Duh. So we've run into mm -hmm. the past where we've gone a little, oh, what's the word? Crazy. Uh, and, and I think two, the phrase is spinning wildly out of control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And out yes, hand. Yeah. and yes, yes, a single day dead stick branch in a bucket pinned down by rocks will do just fine. But after a while, you start refining your obsession and you get increasingly creepy in a good way. The, the challenge we have is how close to Christmas can she leave it up? <laughs> and the answer is December 1st. I yeah. just take off the more obvious skulls sometime around November 15th and throw on some autumn leaf looking kind of things just in time for Thanksgiving. All right, let's go get all your crap. <laughs> let's get your crap, I mean, the, uh, your treasures out. and uh, Treasures? These are from like memories past, mister. And we can start decorating. It's going to be beautiful. How happy are you right now? I'm so freaking happy. Are you kidding? This all is right. awesome. All right, so uh, are we done? No, because there's always something missing and there's holes, but this is one of the new ones you came up with this year that I think is freaking genius. Now, we've been eating so much corn all summer because Todd Rhapsodice is about it. He came up with a brilliant idea of drying the corn stalk and then we tie it with a nice ribbon and then you stick an eyeball in it. And all of a sudden, you have a super creepy cornflower. But look how awesome that is. And that was Todd's idea. I thought that was genius. How long has it taken you to collect all these items of wonderfulness? Well, just like 10 years. <laughs> well, no, but you have to remember, most of the stuff is either like dollar store items or stuff that we made from like the craft store. Because, and that's not really that hard because you know I'm not that coordinated. But, I mean, how cool is it to have this stuff? It's just like your Christmas tree. You go, look, it's from Little Johnny's first Christmas. Except for for us. It's like, look, that's the one time that we ran over the cat. No, it, it, that was a joke. It didn't really happen. We didn't really yeah, have a cat. We've never had ever. That was ever. All right, so I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You just sit there, okay, and rhapsodize okay. about this. And I'm going to take one of those mm -hmm. faraway shots of you sitting all alone in the corner. <laughs> the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream is brought to you by PC Laptops with desktops and laptops starting as low as $7.99 with a lifetime parts and service warranty. They fix phones too. Go to PCLaptops.com. And by Brio Technologies. They rent, sell, and install audiovisual components including professional sound, lighting, video, and intercom systems, components, projectors, interactive whiteboards, and classroom audio systems. Just go to BrioAudioVisual.com. Where's your phone? Welcome back to the Todd and Aaron Show, by the way, and thank you for my beautiful tree. I actually, it's charging over there, I like just it. out of reach of my hands. This and is I'm, the farthest you've been away from your phone in a long time. For a while, yeah. How does that feel? 
not good for me. Oh, is it lighting up? Is there a message of some sort? All right, I would like to point out that my our career depends on my ability to have my phone and be able to access things. Also, because of our son's health issues, I have to be right on top of it. I have sure. to be able to have it. I know. So it is interesting, though. They have found what they call peculiarities in how we use our phones here in Utah, that we are peculiar people. Interesting. Okay. It's true, which I still love that line. I don't know why. And we all say with a certain amount of pride. And I have out-of-state friends go, why, why would you be proud of that? I went, we're said, odd. Because we are peculiar. We we're, like we're it. We're odd people. Well, here's the deal. So they actually found some anomalies based on nationwide usage of phones and what we do. The first one, for instance, um, you would think that there would be a big division between older and younger people. Like, for instance, older people would use it less than younger people. Right. Here in Utah, between right. the ages of 15 and 65, uh -huh. there's almost no difference. Really? They use it with the same amount of avidness and oftenness and, and regular I, usage. Can I suggest maybe mm -hmm. it's the large families and keeping in touch? That question could be. Mark? That I'm could not be. sure that's right. Now, it's very, very funny. The majority of the groups, and this one across all three of, of the age demographics they huh. picked, and the, they also did, divided it between men and women. The majority said they are somewhat addicted to their phones. They check their phone up to 160 times a day. They have never used their phones to drunk text and X. That's a good thing. They never look at their phones on a date. That's another good thing. And they think that their kids should get their first phone in middle schools and not before. Let's talk about do you know that. There's, do you know there's kids in I, Zoe's, I, Zoe's class, class, second grade, and they have right. a phone already, like a smartphone, like access to internet phone, which I... I won't let her plug things into the socket. Yes. I just... I, you know, I can totally see like some of the new new watches where some you can watches. you can log in and check in on your kids. I've actually been thinking about that for Zach and Zoe. And, but... and mom can and, and she can push a button and say mom or dad, and mm -hmm. then they'll connect to us. Plus, there's a GPS locator on it, right, which right. is a very nice thing. But I, a, a smartphone. So okay, <clears throat> let's let's think ahead in her future. Okay. All right. Knowing Zoe so far at the age of seven, at what point does she get a phone? Forty-three. At least. You're going to put technology in the hands I'll of our child, what. who is the most diabolical creature in North America? I'll tell you what. Let's give it to her as her wedding gift when she's 50. That's kind of what I've told uh, her. Her first wedding. Only wedding. First because she can't date till she's like first 39. Date. There you go. So that'll be good. That's interesting. 74% uh, of people use their phones as alarm clocks. Uh, less than 50% use their phone on the date. 67% use their phone on the toilet. Well, when else are you going to have time to text somebody back? Because it's really odd when you're on the other end and you hear that flush. It, well, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't talk to anyone. That's disgusting. I've, d I've heard that. And I'm like, so anyway, what do you... 55% of people look at their phone while driving. Ooh, we all got to stop that. And I'm not saying that I'm great at it. I've been at a stop sign or a stoplight and I've texted someone really fast. But it doesn't change the fact that you're still looking at a phone. There should be an electrical shock that goes down that cord. That you're that would charging be awesome. your phone on and it's like... <clears throat> now, this is what's uh, interesting. More men than women will do that. They'll check their phone while they're driving. 91% um, of people, I am not alone, feel uneasy leaving the house without their phone. You don't feel uneasy. No, I'm completely you, unnerved. You're impossible. There was only one time I forgot my phone and we were taking the kids out to a movie and we were late anyway and you're like, do you want to turn around? I went, no, it's okay. And the whole movie, I'm like just twitching, knowing something could be on my phone that I don't know about. Something might happen on Facebook. Someone might have a kitty running in snow. I don't Maybe. use it to check Facebook. I use it to, to survey our social media platform and respond quickly to texts from important clients. Oh, it's sloths. That, that's right. It's not kittens. Oh, I do love the sloths. They're okay. so sweet. Right. Um, oh, 25% of people check their phones up to 320 times a day. You have a problem. 29% uh, of men do that versus 90% of women. 59.5% of people have texted someone who is in the same room as they are. I've totally done You would do that like if you're on a date, though, and like maybe your girlfriend's across the room or maybe... You're talking to a guy and you're like, please come help me right now. This is, get me out of this. I mean, I think I've actually done that to you when I got trapped by somebody who was super enthusiastic and touchy. We were both, we were both at the dinner table. This is early on on Facebook. And I actually posted and asked Aaron to pass the salt. Because she's so in deep with the thing going on. All right. So anyway, I just thought that was fascinating. They said that there were some real differences with what they saw here than they saw across the country. 
Older young, male or female, we're hardcore, man. The 74% using it as an alarm clock, I find interesting. I think that would be a given these days. Because, no, I, I, I'm, uh, it's interesting it's not higher. Really? Because, you know, you still have the thing like on Groundhog, Groundhog Day. Well, there's also people who are Bill creatures. Bill Murray, of, and it just flips over, and it's like. People are creatures of habit, and getting up in the morning is one of those. So it may be a while for them to get change over to that new that's thing. That's true. Okay. Okay, are you ready All for right. this? Kidney stones. Oh. This is tell me something good, and there's once again. There's nothing you can say about this except for is. lower tab. No, there's there nothing. is. Now, I have had kidney stones, and this is how stupid I am. I didn't think that girls could get them. I only thought men could. So when they told me in the emergency room that's what's happening, I went, but I'm a girl. My poor husband has had them. Three. Three times. And it is exactly what they say. And they say, well, it's more child, more painful than childbirth. I would never say that. I've had both, and you. it was. No, I I've been in labor. I would never say it that to you because you've carried a baby nine months, and you're doing all that. And you're no, I know. It was worse. I'm, and and yeah. all that stuff. But. Uh, I was, ow. Now, you know, the curse, of course, of this for almost everybody on the planet is they give you one of the little strainers. They go, go drink as much water as you can. Which I'm not good at. And they said, wait it out. Well, and that's another thing you've got to work on. But anyway, so you're supposed to go home and hydrate and just carry around your horrible little mesh cup. It's a sieve. It's like mining for gold. In a really horrible, awful way. Now, get this. They have found... No. They have found a new, completely non-drug related no. cure that is 70% effective to help patients pass their kidney stones. Tell me it's not a vacuum cleaner, <laughs> please. There's been points that I think either one of us might have seriously oh considered it. <laughs> Are you ready for this? All right, hit me with it. Prof professor David Wardinger is a professor at the Department of Osteopathic Surgical Specialties. Okay. And this, of course, is in Boston. Yes. And he led a pilot study and then an expanded study to pilot assess study. whether or not the stories he were, was hearing from patients were true. Oh, no, because stories. Because he was getting a lot of, he had a lot of patients who were, had chronic issues with kidney stones. And this is what they found out. It was just published in the Journal of the American Osteopathic Association. I had patients telling me that after riding a particular roller coaster at Walt Disney World. Oh, shut up. They were able to pass their kidney stone. No. I had one patient say he passed three different stones no. after riding multiple times. No. So this went out and he tested a theory using a validated synthetic 3D model of a hollow kidney complete with three kidney stones. He took the model in a backpack on Big Thunder Mountain at the theme park 20 times and his results replicated the patient 70%. Now he said, Shut up. here's the interesting thing though. He had to refine it. He said, in the study, what we found is sitting in the last car of the oh, roller coaster please. showed the 64% passage rate, while sitting in the first few cars only had a 47%. Now, he said once they went into the expanded study, they used multiple kidney models, and then they tried a few different ones. Now, this is interesting. For instance, if the stones were in the upper chamber of the kidney, it was a 100% passage rate. Um, and they used all kinds of different shapes and sizes and varying things. Here's the funny thing, though. The Big Thunder Mountain was the only one that worked. They tried Space Mountain and Aerosmith's Rock and Roller Coaster, and they were not as successful, and here's why. The rides were too fast and had too much velocity with a G-force that would pin the stone into the kidney and did not allow it to pass. The ideal coaster, they said, is rough and quick with lots of twists and turns, no upside down and no inverted movements. But this is amazing. He says one of the things they found that was fascinating is, is that with some of the kidney stones that are massive and they've actually had to break them apart with sound waves, yeah. which is extraordinarily painful and yeah. a bit dangerous, they said it tended to have the same kidney stone shattering effect riding the roller coaster. Yeah. How cool is that? So you want a jouncy back and forth kind of twist and turny roller coaster, but not the terrifying velocity of death ones. And that kidney stone pops out just like a bad zit. Oh, we're doing this. Is this there nothing Disney can't do? Pretty much no. Well, he's think a, of the cost, though. That's what he said, though. He says it's a lower cost alternative to health care for this. No, if you, we're going to Disneyland. I know how much it costs. Okay, so first would of you, all. Would you not rather do this than have kidney stones? Okay, first of all, this just makes me angry. <laughs> okay, for, second of Why? all. Why? Second of all. The worst place I could be with a kidney stone would be in Disneyland. 
Well, maybe we could use Lagoon or one of the rides done I, at Vegas. Oh, no, they're not proven like Disney. <laughs> he explained the kind of velocity and the kind of style yeah, of I roller got, coaster got, that I worked. Got all that, yeah. No, there's no way. It's like, Todd, you have a kidney stone. We're going to Disneyland. Uh, screw you. <laughs> I'm going to lay here in bed, drink water, and be miserable. All right, then the kids and I will go to Disneyland. You stay here in the bed. Oh, just using it as an excuse. I'm sorry, the one time I had kidney stones, I would have traveled to Siberia and let someone beat me with a raw fish if I thought that would have gotten it out of me. On the other hand, if you guys, we had planned a family vacation and I faked a kidney stone to stay home. Huh. Thank you, Mr. Doctor. You'd be the worst dad in the <laughs> world. Thanks, Mr. Doctor. All right, coming up in... In a minute, there's nothing sadder than Schadenfreude, which is basically... What's Schadenfreude? Right Schadenfreude is the, Schadenfreude. is the pleasure in the misfortunes of others. And I, I fight it, and even sometimes I have it, which is venal and vile of me, and I hate it about myself. But there is something about watching those god-awful lottery stories where they go, this is all the crap I bought with my lottery money. Where's food? And then like three day, you know, years later, they're like broke. There's some cautionary tales here that you probably want to know about. Disneyland, seriously. It works. What are you whining about? Right. This is my husband. <laughs> you must be in this much pain to ride this ride. <laughs> seriously. All right, that's bonus points. Oh, that, that was, was good. Friggin hurt. That was good. Oh my gosh, we'll be right back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was really good. The Todd and Aaron Daily Stream is brought to you by PC Laptops with desktops and laptops starting as low as $7.99 with a lifetime parts and service warranty. They fix phones too. Go to PCLaptops.com. And by Brio Technologies. They rent, sell, and install audiovisual components including professional sound, lighting, video, and intercom systems, components, projectors, interactive whiteboards, and classroom audio systems. Just go to BrioAudioVisual.com. All right. I think we should all know this by now never having won the lottery, um, but if one does, um, I fantasize about it all the time. It is amazing for something that is so completely out of like all of our reaches that we all spend an inordinate amount of time going, well, first. Well, I do. I, yeah, well, I do too, though. You buy an island. Next. But, no, no, that's not what you do. Now, Forbes magazine is one of the most venerable financial magazines like in the world. Conservative. And they just did this awesome, like sort of breathless, this is what you do, the five things you do when you win the lottery. Right. Because I guess right now the Powerball is at 500 million. Uh, it's just the, 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 the billion. Who well, here's cares? the deal. Things to do if you win the lottery. Number one, stay anonymous. Do not be the person that stands up there holding the check going, Come and rob us. Because every single person who has ever known you in your lifetime and thousands of creepy strangers will track you down. Online, they'll just find you. They will find you, and it will not be pleasant. Um, number two. Oh, by uh, the way, this includes relatives and stuff. Do not tell anybody. Don't put it on your Facebook page. You just sit back for a while, and you find a financial advisor, which we're getting to, I know, and then park all the money there and take some money with you. And don't touch it for six months until okay. you figure it out. Number two, and I thought this was adorable. Sign the winning lottery ticket. Very with important. Your signature. You own it when you sign it. It is a they call it a bearer instrument, meaning that whoever is holding it, it's yours. So if it doesn't have your signature, yeah. Okay. Also, uh, choose the upfront lump sum cash yes. over the annuity payments right. when you win the lottery. This is pretty important. Now, the thing is, is it's thirty years. You get these payments over the next thirty years. The, right. But the upfront uh, cash payment, they say, Take is it. well. The reason why they say this is the worth of a dollar today is worth more than the worth of a dollar tomorrow. That's their assumption. With a lump right. sum payment, you can invest the proceeds now earn a financial return, live off the interest. The annuity spreads your, uh, your winnings over 30 years. Okay, so wait a minute, wait, wait. Okay, so. And the only value there is, is that if you know you're gonna go hog wild and just completely lose your mind, the annuity option might be good because it keeps you from spending everything like in 30 you're an minutes. idiot. First of all, if you get like $20 million, mismanaging would take some effort. We have a story about that coming up, but continue, please. Assemble, assemble a stellar team of financial, legal, and tax advisors. You, you want go. smart monkeys who are going to be able to go, this is what we're going to do now. And they're going to go like this. Stop that. Because you got that. a buttload of money. But actually, most of the smart ones, and they've talked about this, financial advisors would say, no, I will tell them to go and spend Shut this up. big of a chunk. Go go be fun. Spend something stupid. Right. Enjoy yourself. Right. Then we'll, do, we'll control the rest. And only lease things. Lease a yacht. Don't buy it. This was weird. Pay off your existing debt. Simplify yes. your financial financial would, life. I Why? Do, because then you get less mail. Uh, I guess. 
But I would just be thinking, well, who, yeah, I guess that's a big deal. You could do a fundraiser, you know what you could do? Hmm. You could find all the orphan children with kidney stones in the country. And take them all to Disneyland with me. <laughs> I think that would be wonderful. Oh, yeah, mock the orphan children. That's <coughs> nice, Doug. I cracked me up. going to hell. Let's say you don't do those five things. Let's say you just don't think this through and you go hog wild. Let's say you just don't give a crap. And it's 1998 and you land yourself $19 million in 1998. Which would be worth, they say, if you're adjusting for cost today, would probably be about $43 million. And let's say that you're 55 years old. Let me take you to the present time right now. This 55-year-old? Jim Hayes. His, Jim Hayes. With a boatload of money? Jim Hayes, current time. Okay. Sitting outside a bank. Going to go in and withdraw some of his many millions? He's got a gun in his belt. He's not a security guard. He's sitting there. All you have to do is go over. He's done all this research. All you have to do is go in and say, give me the money. Is he pep-talking himself to rob yeah, a bank? Yeah, yeah. And then he says, you shouldn't do that. And goes, oh, he's fighting back and forth, good angel, bad devil. And they're going back and forth. And he says, okay. And he walks in and he puts the thing down. And he says, give, give me the money and put it in the bag. And he, and this guy had won $19 million and, on and he's out, robbing banks. And the way out, he goes, it's, uh, my family's sick. And he apologizes and he leaves. Well, he keeps doing this. Uh, they call him the PT Cruiser Bandit because that's what he drove because he bought it with some of the money that he stole from banks, $40,000 altogether over the year. You know, that's not a lot of money. And and this is a federal crime, so, I mean, that's 20, like a 20-year 20 sentence. 20-year 20 sentence. And, and if you think 40000 but this is multiple bank robberies. This isn't like one. They right. say the average bank robbery nets you less than $10,000. Usually more like three. And so you just went through all of that, and you're going to end up in 20 years in prison for $3,000. Go sell a kidney like the rest of us. You're probably, you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a minute, Todd. Earlier you said in 1998, he won $19, 19 million. million. I will now go down the list. <clears throat> Lamborghinis, Porsches, Harleys, oceanfront condos, gambling trips to Vegas. That's hanging never out good. with stars, race car drivers, racing them in very expensive cars, spending all his money on stupid stuff. From 1998, he managed to screw up $19 million to the point where he was rob robbing banks for his drug habit. The final thing he said that made him go into the bank and do it was, do you really want to go this whole weekend without drugs? That is super inspiring. It's a message that, that today's amazing? youth are... Is that just amazing or not? That is the saddest thing ever. You there, know, there are, there is, you know, the horror stories about, you know, uh, family members suing you and family members actually taking you know, out a hit on your life because they figured you're killed because of it and you're in jail and stuff like that. I think those people should give that money to me and let me show you how to do it. Because you would be so sensible. I would be so sensible. You would be adorable at being a diamond heiress. No one would know I was a diamond heiress. No tiara, maybe under the hat. Shh, quiet. A do-gooder, quiet do-gooder of goodness. I have, to, I have to admit, that is the one thing that has disappointed me, and I know that a lot of these people may or may not be used to this, but a lot of the stories I've heard about what they spent money on, they never they never include charities. They no. never include things that they did or foundations or things that matter to them. No. or you know, they, And that was the part, I think, that disappointed me the most. It's like, because that would be my dream. Like, you could be the person that would write a check that would solve someone's problem for life. Quietly. No, not even a check. Yeah, yeah they would a, never. They a would, bank exchange. Yeah, they would right? never know. But I'm, I, I right. just that to me would be like the most awesome thing ever. In reading this story, one of the interesting lines was, "I was meeting women that would never have talked to me before," and I have to tell you, when is the last time you saw a big busty blonde driving down the street with an old guy in an old pickup truck? Never. I know what you're thinking. You're saying the the show just isn't complete. What more can we offer that will inspire people? I have something, and it has to do with mountain goats. Oh, I like mountain goats. a nice little nature-based thing. Let's Everyone do it. does. In 1920, they introduced them. And this is Washington State to Olympic National Park. They're and, nimble. And they said, 
here, have a couple of sheep, and turned into 700. Currently, Apparently, se- they really like it there. No, okay. That's not the only thing they like, Missy. Okay. They like human pee. Not directly. Explain that. That would be odd. No, it's, it's, it's the, odd, period. It's the, it's, the, it's the minerals. It's the salt. Because their diet is based on, on just like twigs and stuff, and they really need salt and minerals, and so they find it very alluring uh, to go and, and do that, to get their... their so they're their hanging own. out around campsites or like yes. outhouse areas, and, and they're like... Go, well, just, And their little hooves are trying to do the thumbs up, but they can't because they're hooves. So it's all peace. Um, uh, or victory. Wait, that's... In England, this is a bad thing. Um, so basically, they've been hanging around... Um, for freelancers, uh, hanging around trails and stuff like that. Hey, why don't you have another sip of that beer? Here. Just, I'm going to trot over to the car and pick another one out for you. Because you look thirsty. Hey, I'm You ram- must be parched, right? I'm ram tough. Uh, it's funny. Uh, so uh, one guy got gorded because evidently wasn't drinking fast enough. And so they decided that uh, well, we're going to have to do something about this. So That's so sad and so awful. It is so gross. Couldn't they it? just put up salt licks or something? How would you attach them to the people, though? So what they decided to do instead <sighs> is they trank them. I always wonder what's going through their mind. They trank them, and they put a bunch of them in a big cargo net. Right, and they blindfold them, maybe, and then they lift them up, and they're taking them to three other uh, uh, state national parks. parks. Yeah, national parks. But can you imagine them Man, just flying over, just going, have... "Wee!" <laughs> you have no idea what I've been seeing. Oh, tell, Man. talking to his friends, it was awesome, awesome. That is so sad. Yeah, it's not so their fault. It is not their fault, and so they're being actually picked up and taken other places because of uh, people peeing. Now, you know, there is the natural progression of life that I had never considered. Now the show is complete. No, not all. We, there's two things. We have a brand new, fresh, sparkling $100 gift card. We have it on our two different Facebook pages. Um, we have one on Tell Me We have tell me Something Good. I don't know if you've gone there yet. On this Facebook. Is, when things suck, this is a great page that is always, always, always happy and there's, inspiring. There's no go, go pee stories. There's none there. of those. There's and if you really have the same filthy love of this month and this season as I do, our latest page is the beautiful Dark Halloween and fall style and decor and we have a $100 gift card there as well so just stop by say something say hi uh, click like the page and uh, we'll get you on your way with some extra moolah if possible I'm trying to think if we covered it all Halloween tree uh, we did the cell phone usage we've got kidney stones on roller coasters and a little sheep pee we're done you guys have a great day we'll see you tomorrow morning on the Todd and Aaron this Daily was Street. Emmy material wasn't Daily it? Stream this could be this is Emmy material no, deluge. The, the Todd and Aaron deluge. It works in with the well, rainstorm. It works in with the We're going to move stones. on. La, la, la. We're all done here. I'm very excited.